Praise the Lord. Is everybody ready? Everybody ready, ready to be attentive ready, to the ready. Word of God? Woo, thank you, Jesus. Everybody ready to get attentive to the Word Amen. of God? Amen. Well, hallelujah. We, well, it's good to be ready, right? Because when, we, when we're ready to hear the Word of God, that means when we, pay a, when we pay attention to the Word of God, we know the Word of God, then we know the will of God, and we can be blessed by it. So thank God for that. Thank God for knowing, getting ready to hear the Word of God so we can know, getting ready to hear the Word of God so we can know the will of God. Amen. So you may be seated. You may be seated. And our topic for today is God knows and cares. God knows and cares. Amen. See, God knows that you can be tempted. You know that God knows you can be tempted. So it's something that, it's something in us. There's something within us that can be tempted to do the wrong things. And God knows that. God knows that. You see others, and, and some of the reason why might be we see others looking like they're prospering. Mm -hmm. This may be part of the temptation. We see others looking like they're prospering. You can see them on Facebook. <laughs> you can see them on Instagram and various different social media platforms. And it looked like they're prospering. It looked like that they're having a good time. <laughs> but it looks that way. But see, the thing about it is, is so you see that, and you see them looking like they're in relationships, looking like they're happy in them relationships. You see these people, and they look like they're having nice things. They're taking pictures of their, of their food. I, I don't do the Facebook thing but, uh, or uh, things like that. And if I do do social media, it's related to, to church and church events, things like that. And you see them, they take pictures almost of everything. It's like that, man, their whole life is on, is in front of social media. I woke up. Here I am, right? So it's like that, you know what I mean? So it seems like that they show you different things and They'll show you pictures, and they show you even pictures of what they're eating. Like, look at what I ate, right? You know, so we see these things on social media, and as a result of it, it looked like they're prospering and having a good time. It looked like they're in good relationships. It looks like they're ha they have nice things. It looked like they're going to fun and exciting places. It looks like they're having a very good life. But most of the people that you see on social media, off of social media, most people that you see, they're not going about it the godly way. They are not going about it the godly way. Amen. See, that's a big key. There's nothing wrong with eating a fine meal. I love eating a fine meal. My wife cooks plenty of fine meals. I love eating good food. There's nothing wrong with wanting to have nice things. Not at all. God didn't say, you know what, you're going to go to hell if you have nice things. Not at all. Not at all. But I will tell you this. I will say this. That. You have to go about it the right way, though. You must go about it the right way. If you don't go about it the right way, what end up happening is it's not going to last very long, and it's not going to be something that you can build a foundation upon. So we see people out there, and they're going about it the wrong way, gathering and getting all of them things. But God wants us to do it his way. God wants us to do it his way. He wants us to put him first. Amen. To go by his rules. He wants us to go by his rules. You want blessed? Go by my rules. 
You want blessed? Go by these rules. Right? Go by these rules. You want to you wanna have nice things? Go by these, these rules. Can anybody tell me one of the rules to have nice things and to have substance? Right? What, so what measure you meet? Whatever measure you shall meet, that shall be also given back to you, right? Good and good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. There may. There, that there may be meat in my house. Yeah. Herewith saith the Lord. And see, I'll pour you out a blessing that you shall not be able to receive. See, he wants us to have things. Right? He didn't say it was a sin to have things and to be able to have blessings and blessings overflowing. And, you know, he didn't say anything, but he wants us to go about it the right way. Amen. The right way we must go about this thing. We must go about this the right way. And um, I, had, I was reading the bulk of this sermon. I was reading this uh, a, while ag a, a while ago, and it came back to my, my mind that I wanted to preach off of it. Because there's a lot of good things, good points, in the, in the main body of text that we're going to spend most of the time, the biggest text outline we have there, which is in Psalms 37. And so, but yeah, so God wants us to, want to bless us. And we need to not be, we, we see other people and what they're achieving, and we want it. We want to do what they're doing. We want to achieve what they have achieved. We want what they have. Right? And how I know that, you can even look at in the, you can even look in the church. The churches that before, before the world would pull Pull the ch with, with, with the church would sort of uh, dictate what the world was doing. The church would dictate what the world was doing. Now it seems like that the, the church is emulating what the world is doing. If you look at the way people who call themselves gospel artists, how they're dressed even now. You know, they're so, the women are showing cleavage, so it's just way beyond, it's out of control. How do you think you could be dressed like that? And, and be singing and praising to God. Uh, it, it's, 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 not, it's not so. That's ought not to be. Then you got guys on praying and, and praising the Lord and singing songs with their head covered. Like they're trying to be cool, like they're in a hip hop, uh, a, 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 rap, a rap movie or a rap video. What's the deal with that? We should feel good about what we're doing and not have to emulate the world. We are who we are. We're who we are. We're who we are. You see pastors now trying to play down, play down what they, what they dress. They used to dress similar to what I dress. Now they want to come up in the pulpit in jeans and be all casual like. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong, but I'm saying I think we are trying to lean more towards the world. And we need to stop that. Like the Bible says, make a difference between clean and unclean, holy and unholy. We need to stop trying to follow the world. Let the world follow us, right? If we follow the world, what the word of God says, the blind lead the blind, what happens? They both fall into the ditch. They both fall into the ditch. So if we're following the world, they're going to lead us into a ditch. The world should be following the church. That's what we ought to have them. They need to follow the church. That's what they need to be doing, following the church. So I want us to turn into or turn in your Bibles to Psalms 1, 18 and 8. And it reads, it is better to trust in the Lord. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Better to trust in the Lord than put confidence in man. And I want to even go and say, when I say man, that, that's anything that regards man. 
the, the, pro the products that man makes, right? The things that man do, right? The products that they do, the, the things that man uses to maybe try to give them confidence, anything like that. Why would that, why is it better to trust in the Lord? Because the Lord will never get outdated. He'll never break down. He'll never go away. Yeah. He'll never be defeated. <clears throat> Preach, Bishop. But man, they, the very man you may have your confidence in may die in 10 minutes. Then your confidence is gone. The man that says, oh, you know, you should be able to do this and that and the other, and you find out that he was a fraud. He didn't do it the way he said he did. So where do you put in your confidence at? Why would you put your confidence in man? That's a create, he is a creation of God anyway. So why would you put your confidence in one of God's creations instead of in God who is the creator? Right? Don't make sense to do that. I'm going to put my confidence in the creator. I'm not going to ask you, if I'm looking for something done, why would I ask the creation instead of asking the creator? Well, no, well, who made you? Oh, okay, I'm going to, who made you? Oh, okay, I'm going to go to him. I'm not going to go to, go to the creation. I'm going to go to the creator. But we're too busy having confidence in man who, who's in, who is the creation of God instead of having confidence in God who actually created that man. We need to put our trust in God. So in saying that, God knows. God knows and cares. He knows that we, he knows we want to elevate ourselves. He knows we want better for ourselves. He knows this, but he wants us to go about it the right way. He wants us to trust in him, right? He wants us to trust in him. Isn't there a scripture that says something like that? Lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path, right? So we have to understand that he wants us to have the best, right? Because we know in his word, I think it's in Deuteronomy, he said he'll make you the head and not the tail. He wants you to have the best, but he wants you to get it the right way, to go through him. I was thinking about this earlier this week. My dad, I, I mean, I didn't live a lot with my dad, but I have some stories about <laughs> my dad. Right? And I was telling some of the stories to, about my dad uh, to my patients, about how my dad lost patients, and it pretty much scared me. All right, and uh, this isn't on topic, but I, I, since I kind of opened into it, so I'm going to tell this isn't what I was going to share with you. My dad was a, was a very big man. I don't know some of you all, some of you, you know, who knew him can remember how big of a man he was. My dad's a big man. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember I, uh, wasn't, I wasn't performing the way I should have been performing in school. I wasn't performing. I and mean, that's one of the things my dad took very very, very seriously with school, right? And, and I didn't take it very, very seriously. <laughs> and, so, and so we were riding home. And we were riding home, and he was getting on me, man. He was really letting me have it, man. You know, he was riding, and I guess he wasn't paying attention, and I guess he might have went out into the intersection a little bit. And, this, and there was two guys in the car, and one guy said something like, can't you drive that little car? My dad stopped the car right then and there, put that thing, put the brake on, jumped out of the car, and was trying to get the people out of their cars, opening up the door. Come on out of there! Come on, okay, come on. You know, I was like, Dad, please get back in the car. Please get back. Come back. Come back. Right? I was like, you know what I mean? So that was a very scary uh, situation. All right? Uh, so sometimes us parents, we can do some things that make traumatizing. That was really a scary thing there, right, for me. But the point that I was, the, the lesson I wanted to tie, like I said, I haven't li I didn't live that long with my dad, but I have some stories about him, right? But the story that I wanted to tell you is about you got to, God knows and he cares and he wants, that, he wants you to be elevated. He wants you to be elevated, but he wants you to go about it the right way, right? My dad was an accountant, right? Work with the numbers, right? And he, and he sat us down, I don't know what, I, this wasn't, I don't know if he thought this was enjoyable or what. He had to sit down at the table and say, hey, we're going to do some math. 
You know, it's like, you know, like family, like you're having a, like you're, like you're playing a board game or something. Talking about we're going to do something. <laughs> right? So we're sitting there, right? We're doing, he's like, he was like doing an algebraic equation. And he would put it there. And like, we, while they were working on it, I would come up with the answer. I'm like, boom. He said, okay, all right. Put another one down. I come up with the answer. He's like, Garnett, how are you doing this? Right? And I told him how I was doing it. He said, you know what? He said, that's not going to work all the time. That's not going to work. And then he put another equ equation on the, uh, up on the paper that I wasn't A. I believe he put another one up on the tape on the paper that I couldn't do the way that I was doing it the other way. So the point that I'm trying to make is sometimes we see people and it looks like they're prospering, but they're doing it the wrong way, and it's not going to last. You understand? It's going to bring some problems down the road. They took the shortcut. They didn't do the work. They didn't put the time in. They didn't do the work. They didn't do it the way that the God, the way that God said to do it, and it's going to crumble. It's not going to work out for them the way that they would want it to work out. And it's just that simple, right? There's people, you know, yeah, a lot of relationships, they start off lovey-dovey where they're staring in each other's eyes. They're just looking in each other's eyes and saying, oh, I just love you. I just love you. And they're looking in each other's eyes when they're first together. See how long some of them are, see if they're still together. See if they're still together. See if they're still together. Preach, Bishop. Because it wasn't built on the right foundation. Amen, amen. They weren't equally yoked together. They didn't form that relationship in God. Preach. They didn't Woo! have it the right way. So it didn't last. And that's just one of the things. I'm talking about everything that you do, if it's not built upon the foundation of God, it's not going to last. And he knows what you want. He knows that you want these things. He knows you want good things, and he wants to give them to you. He does. He wants to give them to you, but he wants you to put him first, and he wants you to do it the way he tells you to do it. He don't want you to do it your way, because your way is going to lead you into problems. You don't see it right now, just like a lot of children, right? Whenever children are young, they don't see that the way that they're going to do things are going to be wrong, but us parents are sitting and say, oh, man. Can you believe that he, he done did that? Oh, boy. Okay. There's going to be some trouble. We can see it. So sometimes when we're in it, we don't see it. But if you're not doing it God's way, it's not going to work out right. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 16. Better is little with the fear of the Lord. See, it's better is little. When is little ever better? Who wants to have a little bank account? Who wants to have a little food in their refrigerator, right? Who wants to have, you know, when is little better? Little most of the time isn't better. Most of the time it's not better. But listen to this. It's better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. Right? So listen to this. So we got to ask ourselves, it's better to be with the Lord and not have as much and have peace of mind. To know that you are, you're, you're in the, the good graces of God to whenever you call upon him, you can get an answer. It's better to know that you're walking with God and you're doing the right things with God and that you're in the favor of God than to have a whole lot Right? And, and, and have it, you know, and have all, all kind of trouble with it. Like we know that we know people who have a lot of treasure, sometimes it's drug dealers, right? But they have a lot of trouble with it, right? They, you know, they may be the big drug dealer on the block until somebody else comes along. And they want to be the big, they want to be the big man on the block. And so they take them over. They, there's a drive-by to where they took them out. Or somebody ratted them out to the feds or something because they want to be the king of the hill. 
it's better to have that peace of mind saying, you know what? I work by the sweat of my brow. What I got in my pocket, I earned it. Honestly, I don't have to wait. I don't have to worry about somebody kicking in my door saying I have a warrant for your arrest. I don't have to worry over my shoulder worry that somebody went to take me out so they could be the new king. I don't have to worry about Praise any of them Christ. things. You understand? It's better to have little with the Lord. Amen. You know what I mean? It's better. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter 16, verses 7 and 8. When a man... <laughs> listen, listen to this. This is... See, this God wants to bless us. It says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he make even his enemies to be at peace with him. Preach. When a man's ways please the Lord. But see, listen to this. If you go about it the wrong way, some of you might say, you know what, uh-uh, they ain't doing me like that. No, no, uh-uh. I'm going to, you know what, I'm, we're going we're gonna to deal with this right now. Right? We're going to handle this right now. Where we can, we can, you know, we can fight right now. There's nothing between us but ear and opportunity. We can go now. You know to know what happens? God's not in that. God's not in that. Lo and behold, you might end up killing the person and doing time in jail. Or lo and behold, the person might kill you and, and you die in an ungodly act and end up in hell. Ooh. Right? You understand me? So no, we got to do it God's way. We got to do it God's way where he says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. It's better for you to have tied a millstone around your neck and drowned to offend one of these little ones, meaning the children of God. You understand? So we got to do it God's way. Yes, of course. We want, we want peace. We don't want people running up on us and saying things and doing whatever they want to do to us. But we got to go about it the right way. And that's everything we do. God wants us to have the best, but we have to do it his way. Preach. We have to do it his way. Amen. We have to do it his way. Verse 8. Better is a little, here go a little again. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenue without right. Oh, praise God. Better is little with righteousness than great revenue without right. It's better to go about it the right way. As I stated earlier, it's better to go about it the right way. It's better to go about it with the, the way that the Lord tells us to go about it, because He's the only righteousness, right? So it's better to go about it the way that the Lord tells us to go about it, then to go about it the wrong way and get all that revenue, right? And, and you have all kinds of problems, all kinds of trouble. No, we don't need that. Don't need it. Well, let's do it the Lord's way. We'll do it his way. Amen. And we'll be blessed. And we got peace of mind and comfort over it. Now, where we're going to spend most of this uh, portion uh, of, uh, of reading scriptures that is in this particular text right here is Psalms 37 verses 1 through 4, 40 and it reads fret not thyself because of evil doers now listen to this fret not thyself because of evil doers right you don't have to be worried about people who are doing evil or what they're doing or how they're doing it right you don't have to worry about that just fret not thyself because of evil doers. And then listen to this. So not only be worried about the evil that they're doing, but then we also got to deal with this too. Neither be thou envious against the works, the workers of iniquity. We're not supposed to be envious over what they got, what they drive, who they're with, where they're going. Thank you, Jesus. We're not supposed to be envious over that because that comes to not. It's not built upon anything. They're having theirs right now. Yeah. They're having their pleasure right now. And it make, and if you look long enough, you will see that it's crumbling. You'll see that it crumbles. Yeah. They're having it right now. I remember having um I remember hearing somebody talk about they were a they were big time, they were a big time drug dealer. Big time. I'm talking about the feds had came in to this guy's property. Right? He had different stuff. You know what I mean? They had helicopters and everything. I mean, I think this guy had a lot of property. I think he used to feed other drug dealers. He was big. Right? Guess what? He had, he got taken away to where now 
he had he had, he had spent time in jail, and I think what, while he was in jail, while he was in jail, I can't remember this exactly, but this guy was I think he was tormented. While he was in jail, I think one of his children died while he was in jail. Right? One of his children died. And I, I think that was the case, you know. But the situation that I'm trying to tell you is that how much trouble did that cause him? How much trouble do you think that caused him? Well, yeah, don't get me wrong. He had a he had a lot of nice things. Right? But it came crashing down. It came crashing down. So, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the works of iniquity. We shouldn't envy what they have, where they're going, what they're doing, right? Who they're with. If anything, we should even be paying attention to that. We should be focusing on the or walk with the Lord, shouldn't we? We should Amen. be focusing on our Amen. walk with the Lord. What are we doing for the Lord today? What are we doing with the Lord today? Who are we going to be around that's godly today? How am I going to spread the gospel today? That's what we should be focused on. Verse 2. For they soon, see listen to this, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. You understand me? That's what happened. It doesn't last. Whenever people go about things the wrong way, it does not last. And then verse 3 says, trust in the Lord and do good. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land. So shall thou dwell in the land. You're going to dwell in the land. You're not going to be cut off from the land. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. You're going to be taken care of. You're going to be able to live in the land and be taken care of. We got to trust in the Lord. Verse four. This is a popular. This is this is a pretty uh, prevalent scripture here with us, because I quote it from time to time. Delight thyself also in the Lord. I told you he wants to. He wants you to have. He wants you to have good things. He wants you to have a good time. He wants yes. you to enjoy yourself. Amen. He don't want you to be miserable. Amen. Right? He don't want that. It says, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. He shall give thee the desire, to, but just delight yourself in him. I mean, listen to him. Right? You know what I mean? You, you're so delighted in him, you want to be around him so much to where you're in the word. You're praying. You're around his kind. You're around his people. Verse 5. Commit thy way. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light. It's going to be present. It's going to be noticeable. Your righteousness is going to be noticeable. It's going to be out there. It's going to be on a, on a platform. So if people want to be noticed, do it God's way and you'll be noticed for the right thing. Do it God's way and you'll be noticed, noticed for the right thing. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. It said rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. Right? Don't be out there being all uneased and, 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 and having anxiety and and worrying about everything. He says, rest in the Lord and wait. Here we go. So listen to this. And wait patiently for him. Let's pause there. He says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. See, that's our problem right there. We don't want to wait on the Lord. We don't want to wait. But if we wait on the Lord, that's what we need to do. We need to wait on him. We need to wait on the Lord. Don't try to do it your way, but wait on the Lord. Abraham and Sarah tried to do it, um, tried to do it their way, didn't they? Abraham and Sarah, Sarah told Abraham to take her handmaid, right? They have a child, but God said, that's not the child of promise. 
Just wait. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Right? They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Hallelujah. But we got to wait. We got to wait. We got to wait upon the Lord. But see, like I said, even Abraham and Sarah didn't wait. They got impatient. They thought that they would help God out. Let's help God out. Take my hand, man. God said, that's not the son of promise. So guess what? Still got to wait. <laughs> right? You got to do it my way. God wants you to do it his way. Do it his way. So let's read on. Let's keep resting rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Do you see this? It's telling us, don't fret over people that are prospering. Just wait. Just wait. Don't fret over people that are prospering and say, oh, man, look at them, man. Look at what they got going on. Look at how happy they are. Fret not over that. Just wait. Preach, Bishop. Just wait. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Don't do evil, for evil doers shall be what? Shall be cut off. Fret not thyself in any way, in any, it, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Why, we're not supposed to do that because he's telling us for evil doers shall be cut off but those that wait sound almost like we read Isaiah here Amen. but those that wait upon the Lord they shall inherit the earth they that wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth for yet a little while and the wicked shall not be do you hear that? So you see them out there doing their thing, but don't worry about that. Just a little while, they won't be. I'm going to share a story with you all. And some of you are going to relate, be able to relate to this very well. Just imagine that you decide to dedicate yourself to education. You want to be a doctor. You want to do something that's going to, uh, you, something that's going to be well. And you're studying. And while you're studying, your friends and even some of your family members are going to the movies. And you, you, you hear them going off to the movies and you're staying home studying. You're staying home studying. Then you hear them come back talking about the great time that they had. But you were staying home studying. Now you got to understand, now we would fast forward some years in the future to where they didn't take education all that seriously. They went out ahead and they, they, they just decided to set to uh, to to uh, just settle for a high school diploma, or even if they did, they might not even have that. To where now they're working, and I don't. And again, I don't have anything against these establishments. I worked in it myself. They may be working at McDonald's while you are a doctor, right now. They're having trouble paying rent. They're having trouble with transportation. They're living in the less desirable neighborhoods with drive-bys. And here you are taking vacations to Europe. Here it is, you are living in a nice house on the hill. Here it is, you're driving in a nice car. But it took a while. It took you waiting a while. And then that waiting, guess what? You just wasn't waiting for time to go by but in that waiting, you were planning and you were prepping and you were preparing yourself for that situation. Amen. You understand me? Sometimes in our wait, it's a preparation in our wait. We got to get ready to be able to receive what God got for us. You understand me? Because if he gave it to you too soon, you wouldn't know what to do with it sometime. Right? Look at some of these people that come straight out of, the, out of poverty and go into the NFL or the NBA. 
They don't know what to do with themselves sometimes. And then they're winding up broke. How you gonna wind up broke when you had made like a hundred million, two hundred million dollars, and you gonna wind up broke somewhere? Because you didn't you you weren't ready for that kind of responsibility. You weren't ready for it. You're thinking it's about all the gold chains and the Lamborghinis you can buy. You're thinking about it's about you going out buying all that stuff and not checking after your accountant and making sure he's depositing the money the way it should be. You weren't ready for it. So sometimes in our weight, it's a preparation in our weight. We're getting prepared in our weight. Amen. That's what we're doing sometimes. That's what we're doing sometimes. But I, I urge you, I urge you to not get antsy in your waiting. Realize that you are in a process right now. You got to go through this process. God's going to give it to you in due time. Fret yet, fret for yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. They're not going to even be there anymore. You're going to be thinking about, man, remember when so-and-so was around? Remember so-and-so? I remember they had a big drug dealer that was um, in PA. I believe it was in Fayette County. And they would talk about how big this drug dealer was. And they would talk about the things that he would do, right. how he would be sitting at basketball games next to the governor and, and all these kind of things. You know where he's sitting now? <laughs> not... He's sitting next to, he's sitting, he's sitting in, in a cell, right? Sitting in a cell. So the point that I'm trying to say, sometimes we got to realize, I'll wait on the Lord. Amen. I'm, I'm going to wait on him. And while I'm waiting on him, I'm going to keep building myself up in him. So whenever I get what he has for me, I'm not going to get big headed and start forgetting about him and, and not serving him and being caught up in myself. Uh-uh, I'm not going to be that way. I'm not, I'm not going down that way. I'm not going to, you know, say, oh, man, look at what I did. Look at what I built. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be like a Nebuchadnezzar. You know, look at, what, look at how great I am to where now he was eating, with, with, eating like, like bird with bird claws, eating grass in the field. I'm not going to be that way. See, but whenever we're waiting, we're supposed to be preparing. We're supposed to be getting ready for what we're getting ready to get into. See, a lot of times people want, they want the position without the preparation. You understand me? They want the position without the preparation. But what good is the position when you get there and when you didn't have the preparation? But I urge you to make your preparation. Prepare yourself. Because it's going to happen. God, I just read it over and over again. He wants to bless us. He does. So we need to prepare for that position that he's going to give us. It's time now to prepare for that position. Right? There's been people who have had mighty positions who hasn't kept them. There's been presidents of the United States that's been impeached. Right? So when we get into a position, we want, we want to know that we have prepared to be there and we deserve to be there. I can execute this office, you know, well. Nobody gave it to me. Nobody, uh, nobody gave me this. It was no nepotism going on here. I deserve it. I can run it from the top. I can run it from the bottom to the top, from the top down to the bottom. Because I prepared to be here. Preach, Bishop. And, I, and that's what we want to be able to do. We want to be able to say that. Amen. I'm going to read a couple more in this uh, chapter here, like I said, because it goes from 1 to 40. I don't think I'm going to read all 40. Because I think some of you want to go eat too, don't you? <laughs> I know I do. But the meek shall inherit. This is verse 12. But the meek, I'm sorry, this is verse 11. I said verse 12. Verse 11. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. It's not what this is not what it comes down to. You want peace? I'm gonna share this story with you. I remember uh, I had left a job before. 
I was kind of new into being a therapist and I left the job so I could make more money at another job. And when I got to that other job, I would have been delight I would have been delighted to have the old job that I had. It was no peace there. It was doggy dog, cutthroat. They were, you know what I mean? I I I I didn't stand it. I ended up quitting that job, actually. You know what I mean? So sometimes, you know, you got you gotta ask yourself, what is it? You want peace. You're seeking peace. And whatever it is that you're trying to do in life, ask yourself, is this going to bring me peace? Is this going to bring me peace? Ask yourself that. And I'm going to tell you this. If, if Jesus isn't in it, it's not going to bring you peace. It may be that temporary peace. Preach, Bishop. Preach. That temporary peace. But it's not going to bring you that long-lasting peace. What's that song? Peace, peace, wonderful peace. Coming down from the Father above. Right? We want that peace. Right? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's the peace we want. We want that peace. Peace, wonderful peace. Hallelujah. So where, whenever you, regardless of where you're at, no wonder why Apostle Paul, see the Bible fits together so nice and neatly. It's unreal. People, some people who don't know the word of God, who don't have spiritual vision, try to think that it contradicts itself. But no, no wonder why Apostle Paul said, I know how to be full. Can somebody find out for me? I know how to be, I know how to be full. And I know how, I know how to be exalted and I know how to be abased. I know how to be full and I know how to be hungry. Therewith, whatever state I am in, therewith to be content. Because when you have Jesus with you, you're going to have peace when you're hungry. When you have Jesus with you, you're going to have peace whenever you're at your lowest. When you have Jesus with you, you're going to have peace. Because, get this, the same Jesus that had elevated you, he's the same Jesus whenever you're, whenever you're running into a low state. The same Jesus that you serve when you were full is the same Jesus that you serve when you're hungry. Philippians 4 and 12. Philippians 4 and 12. See, that's what we got. Philippians 4 and 11. This is this also there too? Not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am. Because yeah. So, you know, so we have to understand when you serve Jesus, you can be that way. Amen. You can be that way. And I think with the Lord, he, that's what he, the Lord lets us know that it's about, it's, it's about, it's not about, uh, it's not about abundance with him. Because he could take very little and he could turn it into much. Amen. Where he took the little fishes, that the, uh, the, uh, the little, uh, the, the, the few fish and, the, and fish. a couple of loaves of bread. And, he, and he'll, mul he'll multiply. Amen. Right? He'll multiply. He don't need much from us. Right? So with the Lord, a little can go a long way. <laughs> with the Lord, a little can go a long way. Amen. Can go a long way. And on that note, I think we will can conclude. We we will uh, conclude, but I, I I urge you, God no God God knows and cares. And I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you on this note. We're talking about those who 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 are doing wrong. But the word of God said, "Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If what? If he faints not. Right." If he faints not. Right? So let's remember that. We'll have the altar call.